If you like fucking yelling, then you're going to love today's feature presentation. We saw January Man, so you know what that means. Now it's time for Hello, people of Earth, and welcome to How Did This Get Made? I am Tall John Shear, and boy, oh boy, we got a movie for you today. January Man comes out in 1989, Kevin Klein as a cop kind of solving a murder mystery sort of having a lot of sex definitely is it a comedy i don't know but to break it down i am bringing in one of the best uh a person who i believe uh like me had such high expectations for this film please welcome my co-host mr jason manzukas I mean, Paul, I'll be honest. This movie, I, when, we, when you sent me the email that said we were going to do the January Man, yeah. I did in my mind think, well, oh, really? Because I think that might have been a good movie. On you know? paper? And then, on paper, yeah, it's a great and then movie. I looked it up and I was like, maybe I'm remembering the wrong movie because, and then I was like, maybe I'm thinking of, maybe Paul meant we're supposed to do the Jeff Goldblum movie, The Tall Man. And then <laughs> I was like, oh no, he did mean The January Man. And then I was like, I, but I still think this is, I mean, this is John Patrick Shanley script. This has got like a murderer's row cast, including like Kevin Klein, Keitel, Alan Rickman, Sarandon, Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio, one of my like true like like teenage years loves like like Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio looks like the girl that I literally had like an unrequited crush on in high school for she, all of high school she has the look of an 80s person but doesn't look very 80s if that makes sense like she's she able is to pull off a, a look. timeless Beauty, <laughs> Paul. She is a timeless beauty. No, look, I was also uh, like very concerned about this film because as a kid, this was an aspirational film that I wanted to see, but my parents wouldn't let me see it because they're like, no, it's too adult. And I think it just meant because there were boobs in it. But like, I was a huge Fish Called Wanda fan. I loved Kevin Klein in that. And this was after that. And I also loved this movie. Do you remember this movie where he played like a mob boss called like, I Love You to Death? Oh, I don't remember oh. that. Oh. It like everyone in the family is trying to kill him. I think like River Phoenix and Wait, Keanu is Reeves Fish, is Fish called Wanda. Well, let's bring in our guest because yeah, yeah, I want to sure. get I want to yeah. get into all this. Well, anyway, had high expectations, but Avril Halley, who is our producer who picks <laughs> all of our films, she's like, "Trust me, this is uh, a disaster." And within five minutes of the film, uh, when I first heard Kevin Klein say, uh, "May I have express, so please," I was like, <laughs> I wrote her. I was like, "You are a goddamn genius." And speaking of goddamn damn geniuses. God damn. Uh, we are having uh, a very special guest today. Uh, Miss June Diane Raphael is not here and we are filling her spot with a how did this get made all-star, a podcasting all-star, an acting, writing, directing all-star who has a brand new podcast called Add to Cart. Please welcome our friend, Cool Up, Bill Isaac. Cool Ooh, Up, how wait. are you? What an intro. Thank you for having me. Oh, uh, yeah. So excited to have you on the show. You're welcome for watching this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, Kulap, I, I do want to say you're welcome for having to watch this movie because I have enjoyed this movie more like a fine wine. It's aged on me. I actually have been sending clips to my friends because Avril put clips in the Dropbox. I'm like, you need to see this movie. You need to see what's it's going on here. Wow. It defies. It defies it's, it's, expectations. Yeah, I mean, of course I gave it four boobs. I mean, that's <laughs> oh, the yeah. <laughs> That's what I must. I must give it. There's you casual boobage in this, and that's the thing that is really indicative of an 80s movie. Just when it's non-sexual breasts out. It's just sort of like, yeah. we need to put this in that helps us get an R rating. That's <laughs> there's the there's the everything in this movie is at 11. I yeah. feel like everybody, uh, with the exception, interestingly, of Harvey Keitel, who appears to be asleep in every scene. Like, Keitel is doing so little 
in what he in in his performance, he's basically like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, sure. And ke- to juxtapose him, the idea in this movie is that Klein and Keitel are brothers. Okay, yes, not possible. No, it's simply not possible. Klein is doing a fish called Wanda level New York New oh, York accent this, here. This accent should be arrested. I mean, this accent is like, what is going on? Who and said it's it's going to okay? be tough to be arrested because it goes, it goes in and out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right. It pops you're right. up and it disappears. It, and cause some moments when you first meet him, you're like, wow, he is swinging for the fences. Cause we meet him not as a cop, as a fireman who yes. is saving the life of a child. And that's who he what- then gives very intimate CPR to. <laughs> the, he gives the kid CPR and like brushes the hair off of his head and like gives him a little kiss. I was like, what, what, what's going on, guys? What, what, what is, this is like, I don't think firemen like tenderly stroke the hair of the, the children they save. I mean, I'm also going to go out on a limb and say, if you're a disgraced police officer who is involved in some sort of grift, which we don't fully get all the details of, but we understand there's some sort of grift, um, can you just transfer over to the fire department without any issue? Like, is it sort of like, oh, yeah, well, you were a problem at the police department because you were a crook. Yeah. But at the fire department, we don't mind. Come on over. Get us. So the, yeah, so the fire department is a pipeline for disgraced <laughs> cops is what this movie is trying to say. It's a that's how choice. That's how you rehabilitate disgraced <laughs> cops into heroes <laughs> is you make them firemen. And then they get on a beefcake calendar and everything's forgiven. The brother element was so bizarre and the 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 accent really when when they do the few scenes where it's just them like Kevin Klein's accent against Harvey Keitel's it, it's it's troublesome at at <laughs> at the least and then they're supposed to be like Klein is supposed to be like a Sherlock Holmes and I can't buy Harvey Keitel as a Mycroft like there's no <laughs> oh, he not at all but by the way weren't you thinking in spoiler alert but that Harvey Keitel was going to be the killer or or someone, okay, by this the way. Gets like- at, this gets at a huge piece of this movie, which is, I found, very bizarre and also sort of interesting. So, so this movie is a serial killer whodunit, unlock the mystery of the movie, unlock the mystery of the serial killer's actions, and you will solve the case. Type of exactly what Kulop is saying, kind of like a Sherlock Holmesy kind of story. Yeah. And Kevin Klein is pulled back out from disgrace. Rod Steiger, like, chomp, chomp, chomping down on every scene oh. he's in. Can I- Rod Steiger, like, <laughs> wow. like, 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 in a, like a bull in a china shop. He's the mayor of New York. And yes. he's just like, if you told me that if you, I would have rather that he just like smash everything with a baseball bat throughout every scene. It would make sense. Rod Steiger is genius in this film. I need to play you the scene that I've been sending to everyone. Sure, it seems funny down here and now, but it don't feel so fucking funny in the middle of a murder case when you've seen those girls dead. Who do you think you're talking to? Jesus Christ, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? You think I'm your wife? You wanna fuck me? Well, don't mess with me. You mess with me and you better have a goddamn sense of humor the size of Lake Michigan to find something to laugh about. And if I send you a rubber duck to work with, that is the news. Can you understand that? Oh, do you understand? I'm almost positive he has a perm in the movie. (laughs) By the way, that perm, like, there is something going on. Like, those, the titans of acting in that scene. Yes. I feel like there there is... a dick measuring contest going on there. It's like Harvey Keitel, Danny Aiello, and Rod Steiger all moving around. Like, oh, who's going to get the award for yeah. best actor here? Because And also that scene, while I enjoyed it. Yes. So long. So long. So much air, you know, without, like, our main character is not in that scene. For it to be that long is wild. By the way, cool up. Our main character doesn't show up for a long time. For and a it long makes you time. Feel, it makes you feel like, you know, the first like 20 minutes of 48 hours is just a Nick Nolte procedural, cop yeah. procedural. And then 
Eddie Murphy arrives and is just breathes life into the whole movie. And it just is, it's a sprint from then on. The movie acts as though once we get, get ready, once we get to this Kevin Klein, this movie is gonna take off. And once we get to Kevin Klein, I'm like, wait a minute, I think this might be a different movie. Kevin Klein appears to be in a fish called Wanda heightened comedic Sherlock Holmes movie. Everybody else is in a Sidney Lumet procedural. Every single other person is in a Sidney Lumet movie. It's so weird. And I will say this, too. I mean, they are really overcomplicating the plot for, and this is what I think you were getting at before, Jason. For oh, sorry. Not, yeah, yeah, sorry. For yes, it not yes, to yes. connect in any way. Like, yes. Not only are Harvey Keitel and Kevin Klein brothers, we find out later that Kevin Klein may have taken the fall for Harvey Keitel, but also Kevin Klein's ex lover is now Harvey Keitel's wife. Yes. And so then Susan the- Sarandon was was like young Kevin Klein and and young Susan Sarandon's characters were in love. You see pictures of them. They seem so happy and 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 living like a a, a, a happy life. And now she is she and Keitel are married and they are you know, part of New York society, all done up, all like cold and detached. And they're the type of people that go to the ballet. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know what? Those fucking ballet people. Let me tell you something. (laughs) I mean, I can't make heads or tails of what is going on with Susan Sarandon. I just want to point out one more thing, too. When you talk about the tight nucleus of this movie. So the mayor's daughter is having an affair with Kevin Klein. Kevin Klein used to sleep with Susan Sarandon. And they have a thing, but also Susan Sarandon is now dating Kevin Klein's brother, and then Kevin Klein's brother they're is married. In, they're married. Yeah. So it's like everybody is like this is a movie where everybody interacts with each other. They're all You would it, think that that somehow and again, this is a John Patrick Shanley who wrote Moonstruck, uh, yes. who, you know, is like an incredible a, an amazing playwright. playwright. An incredible writer. You would think that the mechanics of this story would exist such that there is so much um, friction between people. There's so much antagonism between between brothers, between ex workers. That you know, Danny Aiello hates Kevin Klein. Uh, you know, every, there's so much animosity uh, that you would think that one of these people would eventually be revealed to be the serial killer. Right? Yeah. Not the that, case. Yeah. That's what we're waiting for. Spoiler we're alert. For the something. serial killer is an anonymous character who's never named or even really shown. And so the solution to the <laughs> case, unlike a Sherlock Holmes or a Agatha Christie or a type of, unlike one of those type of Poirot gives you the reveal, uh, we get, the, the reveal is like a, oh, okay, I guess they got the guy, but we, that that doesn't help. That doesn't. Literally. Um, fix anything there's for us no or our fun. characters. There's no fun no in fun. anything. There's no like, oh, you yeah, there's put no fun. The All those murders didn't no. equal any fun. I, I, I think it's I, almost like they were just senseless murders. Kevin Klein, I think, says, his character says, who the killer is, it does not matter. He No, I actually have the clip. We'll play the clip okay. right here. I wonder if I could get a cup of coffee. Preferably espresso. <sighs> Does anybody know this guy? Who he is ain't important. Has a problem with him. He's nobody. He says the killer is no one. As an audience member, I'm like, fuck you. Fuck you for telling me. Like, that's the, that's it. Like, I just watched a two hour movie to tell me it doesn't make a difference. It's it would about- be like an episode of House in which they're only in the room where they're trying to figure out the case and you never go in and meet the patient. You never go in, you never have any of the experience with the people that are affected by it, you know? By the way, the killer um, is Kevin Klein's stunt double. And I gotta say, hmm. odd choice that he had like shoe polish on his face oh oh that was oh you mean he was in blackface yes, completely that's right. yeah I, okay yes. well that, that's what i kind of wanted to talk about oh was yeah. he in blackface to yes. make it look like he was a black man okay. yes. Uh, yes that yes. is even yes. crazier oh, it's 100%. even crazier yeah a hundred percent in like nike in nike and yeah. like air in jordan's oh, my like it was god not I good. thought at first it was just bad directing. Like I didn't like the way the camera didn't capture the. I was like, oh, clearly that's no, a stuntman no. who's trying he, to be somebody because, else. Wait, Paul, but you are you are right. 
bad directing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you are so right about yeah, that. Yeah, it did work. It, it, that's, this was a benefit of this movie. You can't quite tell what was a choice or, or not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like we we did Jade recently and, you know, like it's like and these erotic thrillers, if this isn't a thriller. And what's interesting about this movie is and what I really kind of like what ne- you could I, you could never settle into this movie because and I want to be very clear. I love Kevin Klein. Love yes. I think Kevin he's Klein. Wonderful. The idea of him playing a character like this, a Sherlock Holmes type c- character, should be home a home run. run. Yeah. By the way, home it felt like run. they were setting him up for a series. Like, yes. oh, this would be his yes. like his series because his like little what you already heard there. His can I get a cup of coffee? Yeah. Some espresso. Like I'm like oh he that's just our, is, that's he has that thing. kind of Sherlock Holmesy and he's at ease everywhere. He's never he's never caught by surprise. Like the 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 scene that that best illustrates it is which is which is bad because it illustrates how good charismatic and compelling he is. But because he is all of those things, it completely robs the stakes of the movie of their impact. So when he is chasing the, eventually he discovers the real murderer. And when he's chasing him and they have the the fight scene. Yeah. Oh boy. The fight scene that that goes down the flights of stairs in the puck building in New York City, right? Yes. And it is, and the whole way down, Kevin Klein is making jokes. He's cracking. He's like, come on, come on, stop. Oh, don't make me do this. And when people are looking, he's like, how am I doing? He's like, he's doing jokes in a movie that should be deadly serious. Well, for but, a or that should be to, the movie. Right. Like, or, I, I was going to say, yeah. the movie, though, the movie that exists is a thriller. Right. But his presence keeps keeps taking the air out of it. So they should have made a movie in which the that he's allowed to be funny and the movie understands make, that make your you know? fletch make your fletch or, yes. or something like that 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 feels like cuz again you have to feel like kevin klein is on a on a roll at this point it's fish called wanda it's uh you know this other movie that i was talking about before where he is this mafia guy um He's the leading man. They know that he can do this thing. So he must have had some say here. Um, it feels like it's cast with a bunch of great people. Everyone's on board. Alan Rickman. Oh, in Alan the most so on Alan Rickman role. And I love it. Like, Loved he, it. He, he's great. And he's also kind of, like Alan Rickman kind of is walking the perfect middle line where he is bizarre, but grounded. And I really thought like, oh, I want to see Alan Rickman. And I'm sorry that we didn't get to see more of these roles from him that were kind of these, I mean, it was very light and kind of fun. I, I, I liked it a lot. I loved him in it. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm obsessed, obsessed. Alan Rickman, one of the true, like should be spoken of as one of the true great actors of his generation, I yeah. think. From, to when you think about the fact that within a couple of years of this movie, he's also Hans Gruber. He's, he's Hans, he's like one of the great, Villains, yeah, uh, in Die Hard, and then also playing this very funny side care sidekick character to Kevin. So Kevin Klein, sorry, we we haven't explained exactly a little bit, but Kevin Klein is a uh, he was a police officer, he was a fireman. They bring him back into the police department to solve this serial killer Disgraced thing. Disgraced police officer. He, Honorary fireman. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but he's atypical because he's a hippie. They keep calling him, or they keep, he's like he's like he a lives beatnik. in the village. He's a beatnik. Yeah, he his friend is an artist. He's like got a very kind of his vibe is not what you especially at this time would consider police officer. He's got I mean, long hair. He's when, got when he takes over his office. In the police department, I was like, they, they are really doing some things. Like, like you find out that he doesn't want any furniture in his office, and he basically brings in his own oak panel desk and has Alan Rickman painting the walls and has his own espresso machine there because that's his calling card. Like, and he just takes out all the furniture. It's like it's so trying to be. You're you're, you're right, Club. Cool like. Sherlock Holmes, like it's like this is my thing. I need to think in the right way, play music the right way. Like he's, it's all this thing. The cops hate him. They hate his guts. Yeah, but then I just like we want a character like this. You want like really good demonstrations of power. Yeah, and we meet him, and I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and finally it's like let's you know he follows um, the mayor's daughter after uh, after a funeral. She goes 
ice skating. And then, <laughs> um, she goes but ice that's skating. A, that's a traditional New York City funeral. Oh, oh. okay. You go to that's the funeral the best and then friend oh. goes ice skating. <laughs> does not go. Just goes from from the church ceremony to ice skating. Yes, you don't go to the cemetery you don't go to to, the for the burial. Wait, you okay. You don't go to the cemetery for the burial. You go straight to Rockefeller Center so you can ice skate. But by yourself and no one. Yes. But no one else was doing it though. I feel or all those people were coming from funerals. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to pull you off track at all, Cole, But I will just say, I knew this movie was bad when it starts on New Year's Eve, and you follow our two main characters who are going home before the stroke of midnight. They're both in their own apartments yes. at the stroke. Like they, they leave a New Year's Eve party. <laughs> Yes, and, if, and if you're, yes, and then if you're not sure, one of the characters goes home, and there's slow motion of her fish tank. Oh, <laughs> I no. was like that what? fish tank. I was like, you're not allowed to have a fish tank in another <laughs> Kevin Klein movie. <laughs> you're, you, this is like that. They should have clocked that and be like, we really can't. But do again, this. But again, you thought. Well, they're spending a lot of time in this yeah. fish tank. Do you think that this fish tank is going to give a clue? Nope. No. No clues. No. no. Nothing. And the movie well, has that's no the thing point. is none of the none of the case the the case of the serial killer the January man the this none of the case itself. I mean, they eventually end up solving it through. By the way, he's not the January man because he's been killing every month. Like oh sorry I think that, no, yeah 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 no, no I know what you mean but you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying yeah. Like, even the movie's name is flawed he is the monthly <laughs> killer he just yes. is caught in January yeah like, yeah he yeah. is not a specific Jan he was like he's oh, the every Gregorian no, no. calendar <laughs> killer <laughs> I mean he's, but that's like the crazy thing is like, the movie's title it sounds good ooh the January sure. no. no yeah but that <laughs> yeah no Klein is a January man he is no know. one. <laughs> You would think he would have put out a press release to be like, please stop calling me the January man. That's not who I am. Well, I mean, back to, guys, what what is Kevin Klein's character good at? OK, so. Right. Yeah, that's he, a good question. He, he, he has a bunch of aha moments he, because he notices things on trucks and signs. Exactly. Like he has a bunch of those things where like a, a truck drives by that says prime meats and he's like, prime meats, prime. Yeah. Huh. Prime numbers. But like, wait. What? what? Like, <laughs> like why? What? And then I was like, oh, okay. The first sort of demonstration is that he gets her to, he gets the daughter to sleep with him. I'm like, okay, so he's like a Lothario type. But by the but way, then... wait, is that, wait, hold on. Is that a demonstration of good detective work? He follows, <laughs> think... the, he follows the, the, the last it's known skill? person to You guys, that. it's skill. Do you think he's like, first, okay, how am I going to catch this murderer? First... <laughs> Sleep with the mayor's daughter, who it's happened skill. to be the, the only second, witness. The only second, witness. Second, stare at traffic until have epiphany. But by third, the way, have, have Alan Rickman, Rickman do paint, it. Have, have Alan have, Rickman do it. Rickman yes. did most of it. He got the computer. I know. So and then when he has like after he has sex with her, is he ups, is he upset because she's young? Like that was a weird. Like oh, were they trying? Oh, what was oh, going oh. on? Like, okay. Let what me was just break about? this down. They keep on saying that Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio, who Carl Tart said to me the other day, he's like, man, I'm surprised SAG let her get in with a name that big. Uh, like, like, <laughs> <laughs> Carl Tart said that. <laughs> but um, he, <laughs> the <laughs> we were then hypothesizing, is there a, like another Mary Master Antonio and that she had to add the Elizabeth or did she add was there a Mary Elizabeth that she had to add the Master Antonio we don't know but um, I mean Carl Tart really you know as a, as a man who has just two single syllable names <laughs> like that's to Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio that's decadent yes, uh, it, it's that is his much. opposite but they make such a big deal of calling her 22 years old now I'm not ageist in any way I, I think believe she's she looks, 23 okay 23 she looks Absolutely stunning in this movie. She does not look like a 23 year old. And I mean that in the way and in the nicest way. It's Wait, you mean she looks older? Yes, because oh, okay, she's actually it, 34 years old when she's making yeah. this movie. And Kevin Klein is 44. So it's like, yeah. And by the way, that's fine. But you can't just run somebody in their mid 30s and call them. Yeah. Yeah. Early 20s. I mean, they make it like oh, yeah. she just got out of college. Like the way they yes. refer to her and talk to her is like she's but just her, a young college but kid. But her performance, 
I will say, yes. is also that of an older person. Like, she does not seem to be a 22 or 23-year-old. Just like, out of college, yes. energy, no. No, she seems to and be— And then he, he's, he's feeling like she's too young. Then I'm like, all right, so you, you're not into her anymore? But then you are into her? So, okay, are you, as a character, like, a Lothario, you're good at sex? And then he figures out he's about to have sex with her a second time— and then he looks at the sky and sees constellations. And instead of having sex with her, he grabs he he grabs uh uh what's his face Alan Rickman, and they all go to a planetarium. Yes. Like, oh, what is right. that? Yes, I forgot about that scene. Yes, what they go. Going? They don't just you know what you know what they don't do. They don't just like look up the constellations. They go to a planetarium and watch a planetarium show. Like again. She's the mayor's daughter and she just takes off and basically starts living with the lead investigator of her best friend's murder. Yes. And and is now part of like a little trio bit of Klein, Rickman and Master Antonio, comma, Esquire. Uh, uh, that's a law firm that I use. Um, <laughs> um, and they become like the 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 Scooby Doo gang trying to solve the the January Man murders. But by the but way, isn't isn't that also like? I guess maybe it does make a difference. But he is working for the police, so now he is like literally in bed with the only. Like, I would imagine, well, it's definitely a witness, and I would imagine suspect on some level, maybe. I don't know. Like, that's a pretty close, per like, the only person they have, the only connection they have to the not January man is her. So, like, for him to get that involved with her, and I, I, I do want to say one thing to Kulop's point. Is he a Lothario? No. Is he smooth? Because, like, I want to play this clip of him seducing her. Today I see you and... I find you very attractive, and I'm feeling vulnerable because of last night, and uh, so my feeling is, I mean, my instinct as a man is I, I don't want to ask you a lot of pushy questions, because I want you to like me. In fact, how real do you want this conversation to get? Because saying these things out loud has made me want to go to the next step and say to you, this restaurant's a five-minute walk from seven hotels. It is. It is. And I'd like to get a room in one of them right now and take you there. You would. I would. Is that seductive? I mean, I don't no. know. She just says yes. <laughs> so that's why I thought it was a demonstration of power. Because <laughs> you <laughs> but, how, how else? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's one of those things, you know, she's just gone to her best friend's funeral. She's just ice skated at Rockefeller Center. So you know she's horny. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I mean. So you know she's like so turned on. She's like, yeah, I want to fuck in a hotel because obvi, I just buried my best friend and have been ice skating. <laughs> Uh, it, like it's the oh my god. Well, I mean, Kevin Klein. I guess maybe his demonstration of Lothario power is his bluntness because he does ask Susan Sarandon how she gets wet. How do you get that wet was with him? Wild. I'm yeah. like, what? <laughs> the 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 Sarandon. Okay, I could talk for an hour just about the the fact. Okay, so so when when uh, so Keitel and um, Klein are brothers who hate each other, um, and Keitel is the chief of police, and he has to. The mayor orders him to bring his brother back onto the force, his disgraced brother back onto the force disgraced to solve because this of serial grifting. killer. By the way, that's the other thing. The the crime is very minimal. It doesn't seem like all these cops would be so furious at a guy that was like taking money off the. I, there was like in a, New York. Oh, you mean the what? What? Yeah. What, what, yeah. What, what was disgraceful about Kevin Klein? Yeah, it yes. wasn't. It wasn't like oh my god, that guy shot a cop or he did it. He ratted out a cop. There was nothing that was like. It was so benign that it was like oh wow, I guess these cops really care about like maybe taking right. some money off the like so, the top. I guess I don't know. So Klein agrees to come back to the force to solve the case with one condition. And the condition is oh. that Keitel <laughs> oh, lets Kevin Klein cook 
Keitel's wife, Susan Sarandon, who is Kevin Klein's ex-girlfriend, dinner. And that dinner, this is where I was like, oh, this feels like a play. This right. is where John Patrick Shanley wrote like a big, long scene that takes place at this dinner that is this little mini play inside He's of this cooking, movie. cooking, they're having a conversation, she finds something, it hit, you're right, it hits all Everything those Everything he cooks her is gross. Yeah. Well, because That's part yeah. of it. Part of the thing is, it's a meal that is meant to be not enjoyable. Because right? he wants her to trust him and go with it. Like, yes. that's his whole, like, his MO is, I'm going to make you something disgusting, but if you try it, that means that you'll be open to uh, things in something? our relationship. I mean, what I get it. What a fucking a, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, is, he, it is a terrible it's move. It's horrible. And then, like, he he offers that to now, because now he's in love with the mayor's daughter. And he's like, yeah. I want to make you haggis. Like, what? what? And then they <laughs> have, like, literally, this is the end of the movie. They've already found the killer. And they go, well, what's haggis? Listen, I want to make you dinner. Yeah? Okay. That'd be nice. I want to make you haggis. <laughs> What's haggis? It's a Scottish dish. You take the stomach of a sheep, and then you stuff it with the sheep's lungs, liver, and heart, some onions, suet, and oatmeal, and then you boil the whole thing. <laughs> well, I don't know. It sounds a little weird. But I'm game to try it. That's a fucking giant scene. Like, why are we adding? A, you're describing a haggis, and then to, I, I will try it. All right, they're in love. Re what is going on? Like, <laughs> honest to God, like if that's what the if the, his. I guess he's a good policeman. I don't think so. Jason, he's not. You know, <laughs> everything, I guess, I mean, movie's trying to tell me he is. Yes. But he really is not a good policeman. He really is, like, it is It is a weak version of a Sherlock Holmes. Very. Because it is, it is all circumstantial. None of it is practical, like, this to this to this. Oh, now, or, or my powers of observation are so great that I'm picking up on things other people aren't picking up. He really is just literally pulling words off of the side of trucks, having things like having weird epiphanies simply to move the plot forward. Not, it's not satisfying at all. It feels like one coincidence after another, after another. Yeah. Like for me, the January man should have won. Like <laughs> yeah. they, these people are bad at they're so bad at this job. They should they should have yeah. lost. He should have killed people for m years. And you're saying that knowing he was in blackface. That's how much <laughs> I was <You're> rooting. <laughs> Wait a minute. Maybe I should take that back. <laughs> Susan Sarandon gets done dirty in this film because oh, yeah. she's barely in it. Um and we don't really know what her motivation is. We don't know why she's like with the brother because there seems to be no connection there. It doesn't seem like we understand her character at all. But why would the brother be like, I know that you used to date my wife. I'm going to let you cook her dinner. Just you one on one. Like, like was he and I, I say this not because I'm expecting it, but like, was he like serving it up? Like, we be like, all right, you can fuck my wife. If that's, if that's what gets you back on the case, you can fuck my wife. Because that seems like where it might have been going. I mean, she certainly comes back the next day with a bottle of red wine to, to do it. That's true. That's true. She was so um, underserved by the movie that I believed she was the killer. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you, well, you wanted somebody to be. She was her storyline was so um, thin, and she had so little perceived agency inside of her own story. She's just ping ponging between these men. That I was like, there's a version of this movie that makes sense where she is the like she is the murderer because we are not otherwise giving her any we're not doing much to serve her character who is I, I integral wrote, in all of these people's lives i wrote you know? some fan fiction down on a piece of paper here oh, and because oh, i was like all right because i was in the same boat i was like what if and it's a little bit of a long shot <laughs> harvey keitel had an affair or slept with mary elizabeth master antonio he kills her and the wife like, like I, that's in my mind. I was like, okay, this is like an interesting thing. Like, 
like the, these brothers keep on having sex with the same woman. Gross. But like that would maybe be a triangle where then like Susan uh, Sarandon is like, I'm mad at this woman. Oh, no, it wasn't. The, it would be like the it would be the the friend of the mayor's daughter. That's who Ivory Keitel had sex with. He killed her to keep her quiet. And then the wife finds out about it. Like, I thought there was going to be a little bit of that. Like I was writing that. I was getting deep into trying to figure out how these characters could be okay. related. OK, that would have been good. That would have been Give me something. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, I was examining I, for a while. I was like, oh, Susan Sarandon is the killer. That's smart. I like that. She's like capable. She's a yeah. badass. Okay, great. No. Then I was like, for a moment, I was like, it's Keitel. Yeah. Keitel is mm-hmm. so angry that he is the, you know, he is the Mycroft. He is the overlooked one. He's being bossed around by Rod Steiger. His wife's in love with his brother. And then they've got this, the whole scene that is obviously a reshoot scene, the walk and talk scene yes. where Kevin Klein says that mom loved me ma oh. loved me more than you ma loved me Kevin Klein's New York accent is absolute garbage <laughs> Keitel is just effortlessly New York and Kevin Klein is like ma you gotta get used to it ma loved me more than I, you oh, I gotta ma, 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 say ma. something about this accent too Kevin Klein is known as being like a New York stage actor which is means that he's a man who spent much time in New York, around the people of New York. Um, and I often find an accent like this is reserved for uh, British people who learn what a New York accent is through Robert De Niro films or like it, Scorsese films. And it's it like feels like he's a I said I that is so incredible. I had the exact same. I felt like this is a British person's impersonation yeah. of New York because yeah. because Klein feels British. Kevin yes. Klein at rest. Yes. If you told me, oh, well, you know, Kevin Klein, like, spent the first 11 years of his life in the UK, I'd be like, yes, I believe you. Well, it's like it's like when Idris Elba, when I first saw the like the wire, like TCA panel or whatever, and Idris Elba spoke in a British accent after like after watching a season of the wire, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> but like, I never would have assumed that he was a British man. But Kevin Klein, you're right. I would. Oh yeah, if he started speaking, yeah. like, oh no, that's where he's from. It would. It wouldn't even phase. I wouldn't blink. I'm like, of course. You of course. cannot convince me he's from New York in this movie. Yeah. It's. It's like it. And and I mean it when I say like he is a wonderful actor. He's not a bad actor no. at all. But he's acting terribly in this movie. Do you with think this it's accent. because? And I I find this a lot that great. Well, I mean, but Fish Called Wanda, he is broad in Fish Called Wanda. Sometimes dramatic actors, when they're doing comedy, will push it. Like, will push it bigger and make a broader choice. And when I think about that movie, I Love You to Death, he is doing like, hey, I'm a, I'm a Tony and I'm a, the mafia guy. Like, he does that for that movie. But if it's inside of that, if it right. makes sense for that movie, you know, like if it's something, then maybe that's okay. But... See, to me, this movie is not at all intended to be viewed as a comedy. No, but I you think I mean? he feels like he's in a comedy. No, no, that, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. His performance, though, is from a comedy, you know? I'm so confused. Yeah. I mean, but, but, yeah. Then, yeah. but then you get this moment. And you missed me. Oh, please don't. When you close your eyes, don't you see my face? Nick, don't. How do you make love to him after me? How do you get wet? Do you think about the money? But then you have like a moment like that where it's like, wait, we've just stopped the movie and we've now, now we're going into that direction. So like he also, as much as he's doing a comedy, he yes. will fluctuate and drop and be like, now I'm in a fucking straight up drama. Again, going back to that John Patrick Shanley play in that apartment. And then the weird three three rhythmic slap that Sarandon gives oh, yeah. him, <laughs> like boom, 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 <laughs> and he just R- takes guys, it. Guys, r- rule of threes. Rule of threes. Oh, okay. Rule of threes. Okay, so we we leave that scene, and it's a comedy. <laughs> it really is. And maybe when she slaps him, it changes tone. Every time she slaps him, the tone changes. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I was genuinely like. Trying to uh, the movie never settles into anything. 
No. It never settles into its plot. It never settles into its tone. It never settles into what I'm any of the recognizable archetypes that it is drawing from. You know, like it's you know that slap is the slap from Moonstruck. Let's let's keep in mind, same guy, right. same slap, same, you know, like the, these elements all are at play in John Patrick Shanley's work, but here where they're kind of infused into, it's almost like they were like, what if we took Moonstruck and inserted it into Basic Instinct, <laughs> you know, or, or something like, or, you know, Jade or Sliver or any of those of the time erotic through Jagged Edge, uh, any of those erotic thrillers, and it just doesn't work at all. The, the The story is chafing against it. Yeah. My my theory is that John Patrick Shanley is the toast of the town. People are like, this guy's great. They hire him to write a bunch of these Hollywood movies. And He's the then, toast of the town? I think as a playwright, yeah. No, I'm kidding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just like the phrase, oh. the, uh, the toast of the town. <laughs> I like to, you know how I like to speak about people in in the Broadway theater world. I like to, oh, yes. yeah, the yeah. toast of the, the toast town. The toast of the town. Um, <laughs> You know, but he is very well known and doing all this sort of interesting stuff. And I have a feeling that he does this thing where he sells. I mean, like these are his movies. Moonstruck, right? Without a doubt. Great. Um, Five Corners. I'm not familiar with it, but it's a canon film. Great so movie. Like, uh, okay. Great movie. All right, it is. Okay, great. All right. It's so- John Turturro. It's basically... Uh, it's it's John Turturro's first movie, and it's it's all of these. It's basically the Yale drama uh, class of that era. Oh wow! Um, in a movie, it's pretty great. Um, or I remember it as great. It's Jody Foster, it Tim Robbins, yeah. Todd Graff, and John Turturro. Uh, yeah. So I'm just looking at that right now. So okay, and then and then you go into January Man, which is this movie, and then Joe versus the volcano. These are the yes. two that are tricky because. Tonally, they're both all over the place. I like Joe versus Volcano, although I know it is bizarre, but it is like there's sacrifices, there's weird things. Like, so I don't know if it's John Patrick Shanley who writes very grounded, interesting stuff getting rewritten by like a bunch of Hollywood screenwriters, so it becomes like a mishmash because the rest of the stuff that he writes is like alive. But then he writes the dinosaur but story. Get, We're it's, is yeah. it not can't, a lot of the blame? Is that what this podcast is about? Blamed deciding blame. <laughs> <laughs> Within that, like a big part of it, fall on the director. Like yeah, I mean you're right. Yeah, the, the tone. Yeah, the tone. Medium, right. you know, like and every. I'm just thinking, like I love Danny Ayo. Like I love him, and every yeah. scene had the same rhythm. He's angry, or he's he gets mad, and then he kind of simmers down, and he goes okay at the end. Yes, <laughs> yeah, like, you're okay. right. He like like a every puppy. Every scene, okay. Every scene, he has bluff and bl- he comes in bluff and full of bluff and bluster, and then capitulates at the end of every scene. <laughs> it's the exact same scene over and over. You're absolutely right. I just yes. can't understand what they gave these actors because, like, <laughs> why does Susan Sarandon go? I need to play this part. Why does Harvey Keitel go? I need to, like. There's no reason for any of these actors to feel like because they're all done dirty. The only two people that or the three, the Scooby gang, they're the ones that have the best showing. Mary Elizabeth, Master Antonio, for the yes. most part. Uh, Kevin Klein, obviously, uh, because he's a star. And then Alan Rickman. Like, they have the most to do. The rest are just gruff and like... Blah, 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 blah. The rest are just <laughs> background characters, but they are... Because because the, the January man, the serial killer, yeah. is not a character in the movie, they make antagonists out of... Um, Steiger, Keitel, and Sarandon but yet in a way. Yeah, but they're not because they... But they're not... And Aiello. But you know, they, they just are, turn out to be assholes. Yeah, Like, correct. they just turn out to be people who are but by the way, ill-tempered. They, they turn out to be people who are assholes, but maybe deserve it. Or, or maybe they earned it. Like, Kevin Klein, if you look at it, has been an asshole to a lot of these people. Like, he is deserving of their uh, ire, of their... Like, he's literally saying to his brother, Ma loved me more. Like, yeah. Like, What? That's like a, that is not a an empathic statement to say to your brother. That's like he's he's a fucking dick. He's a dick yeah. to people in the world. He's a dick in the in in the investigation. He's a dick to the people in power, but there's a way in which I feel like he's being framed as like he's a unique mind that needs to freedom and he should be allowed to deconstruct the kind of uh, hierarchical structures of the police department to bend to his will and blah, blah, blah. 
I don't know. The biggest compliment I can give him is that he is blunt. Because even when you say, like, mom loved me more, it's like, why do you need to say that in that moment? Why would you ever say that unless it was a reshoot that you needed to, uh, like, like underscore something because the audience <laughs> is like, I don't get this. Like, but like, that's who, what it felt like after, to me. After the that test was an, screenings, they're like, yeah, they're like, why do they hate each well, other? Because it's an exposition dump that really f- reframes their relationship, and it's filmed on a green screen. <laughs> So Wait, was it was like, on a green screen? You think so? That walk and talk is a green screen. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Well, there was the side that. mystery that is supposed to show you that Kevin Klein, to exonerate Kevin Klein's character, which is this this check. Oh yeah, what was the it? The check. check. But and what that, was that, that? That was proving that Kevin Klein was framed by his brother and it was the it was Harvey Keitel and the mayor that were doing the grift. And okay, right. I knew that. That Sarandon back in the day took the check and she's been holding on to that evidence. And at the end, she says, I love you. And he's like, I don't love you. She's like, here's this check. And, but I guess like my question was, is like, what does that check show? Because again, I don't know really what happened. Like, what would one check, like, that he didn't cash it? I mean, that, that may have been the other part of it. Like, I don't know. I don't know anything. I'm confused. I don't know anything <laughs> and I don't care. That's the other thing. Because it doesn't the movie, matter. Nothing matters. The movie, exactly. The movie doesn't make you care about the check and that story. The movie doesn't help you understand the stakes of any of these things. Like, And so much so that like the moments of discovery for the investigators which should feel like we're getting closer. We're yeah. closing in like Jodie Foster in um, Silence of the Lambs, right? Oh, wait, is what that the sequel inc- to that? Um, no, no, that's the prequel to my, I have this, my new favorite show is uh, the show Clarice on CBS. I think oh, that I haven't is, watched it yet. No, I think that that's the prequel <laughs> oh my God, movie you're, to I that. Yeah. that. you're Gen Z. I always yeah, forget uh, that. Yeah, I, I heard it's this based is, on a movie, yeah. I'm is talking about a movie? a movie, I'm talking about the movie that's the sequel to Manhunter. Oh, oh I, I only know Clarice. I know Clarice. I, so is it the same actress from Clarice, the TV show? <laughs> In yes. Science? Okay, go. Cool. Cool. Uh, I love no, no. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry. Okay, so so and, and so anyway, so it's Clarissa knows it all. Um, <laughs> that's a show I want to see. That's yeah. a show. Uh, it is I'll, Melissa. I'll play it's premium on Peacock for that show. <laughs> It's Melissa Joan Hart as 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 an FBI profiler. Solving mysteries around town, but she's also can freeze time. No, Clarissa can freeze time. Uh, um, anyway, so uh, what I was going to say is, and I want you to play this, please, yes. in its entirety, but it's so unsatisfying when things happen. So, as in, when... Kevin Klein and Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio, again, a timeless beauty. Oh, timeless. A phenomenal actor. <laughs> You're on record. And maybe, w- maybe one of the most uh, uh, significant Jason, crushes of my life. I need to break this to you. Yeah. When she was filming this movie, she fell in love with the director and they married right after it. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> but they've stayed together. It's okay. It's true and love. You know what? I believe in their love. I believe in their... Listen, I'm not trying to get in the... I'm not trying to get in the way of Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio and true love. The same way that I'm not going after Emma Thompson. These people are... <laughs> these people are deserving of the love that they have found. I'm not going to try and rob them of it, even though I would be better as their mates. Anyway. <laughs> Wait, um, so you were saying that you want to play... The scene that I want you to play is the scene where Kevin Klein and Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio are discovering what song Buddy, is oh in my the notes Buddy, I got of it the queued computer. Up. I got it queued up right here. There's seven notes in a row. Da, 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 I love, I love my little calendar girl. It goes on for so long. It goes da 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 da, and they look at each other. Da da da. No, wait, wait. No, da 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 da. It is. It's it's absolute. It's abject chaos. It's crazy. Because the the reality is, once you have those notes, it's inst. Like you can just. It's you can play it. Like you have the the. It's there. Can we just also just break it down and go? 
this is the plan? This master serial killer is like, I like the song Calendar Girl, and I'm going to look at the landscape of Manhattan and then play Calendar Girl by killing the girls in the window, which, by the way, also could be just a big problem because how do you know that they're yeah. all residential? How do you know that a woman lives in all those buildings? It's a very a tricky... single woman. Uh, yes. Yeah, sing- you know, it's just... It's a very tough, it's a very tough plan to orchestrate. I was just going to say, think of how much work. If I'm being honest, again, I'm going to go back to my previous statement. The January man has the most compelling storyline in this <laughs> We movie. need to find out what's going on we in his need, mind. We need a TV show like Hannibal that's just about <laughs> yes. the January man. The January yes. man. Like, again, because I'm like, he's doing so much work and research in order to find and execute all of these plans. He has to isolate buildings to match the constellations in the sky, floors of buildings to find (laughs) single women on those floors to match the notes of the song. Like, there are so many ways this could go wrong for him. I mean, it it is... Plus, he has to get in blackface. I'm assuming to do every one of these. I mean, by the I mean, way, like, the, this I, is, I just want to like nuts. I do want to call out the blackface one more time because it's awful. It's, it's oh awful, God. but it's also like okay. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm. I'm. As as you're listening to this, uh, Jason Klopp, you can judge me and, and and correct me, but everybody else, I'm just trying to work out an idea here. <laughs> Wait, Paul, why are you holding a tin of shoe? <laughs> okay, now now hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul, wait. Hear Paul, me out. Stop. You know, just Paul, let me wait. Just, you're going to ruin your shirt. Uh, please, please. Turn off uh, your camera, Paul. Turn off your camera. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I just want to like walk it through. The one thing that we know about this guy is that he is incredibly stealthy, right? There is, there is a, uh, a deliberateness. There is a stealthiness that he has that. Well, Kevin Klein makes sure to mention that he has picked all the locks, which is almost impossible. He hasn't right. broken into places. He's picked the locks, which is very difficult. Go ahead. So, so we have set up this character who I think um, is not going to get caught anywhere because I guess what I'm saying is why the disguise? Like there is no reason mm. for the disguise because he's not blending in. No one's going to see him because he's not... He's not out in the mix. He's not in a crowd. There's no assumption. Yeah. My assumption would be in case he is caught on security cameras going in and out of buildings or in an elevator, in case he is spotted by people coming in and out of a building, anything that could be anecdotal, not necessarily primary sources, like the person he's going to kill or something like that. Or it's just uh, a large leap to be like, why not just put on a wig? You know, or or wear some glasses. Like this guy is like, mm, get out the shoe polish. I, I, Let's I, do this. I feel like Klein even says like, what in the in that uh, the scene that you played of like he's nobody. Doesn't he say something like, you know, he could be anybody. Yeah. Like you, well, so yeah. you would think he'd be a milk toast white man. Like why? Like it's so <laughs> weird. It's so bizarre. In a movie full of absolute bananas choices, that is just a very unsettling and uh, unfortunate one to insert into the end of the movie. It is, it's egregious. <laughs> but Let me ask you this. <laughs> Do you guys think the scene in which, okay, so the final um, setup of the movie in which the murderer is revealed and the heroes are vindicated and blah, blah, blah. The final set piece involves um, the mayor's daughter, Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio, the goddess of all goddesses, <laughs> um, being used as bait in order to lure the murderer in, right? Right. And what they do is they build a neck piece for her because the murderer always strangles someone oh with a gosh. ribbon. So they build an artificial neck piece for her so that she won't be, when the guy tries to strangle her, she won't be. It's like a hard plastic uh, neck piece kind of, you know. Um, But, okay, so she goes into the apartment. The guy, the murderer starts to try and strangle her. And Kevin Klein is then supposed to break in and rescue her. Now, Kevin Klein using a fire extinguisher to try and smash the door cannot smash the door down right. and she is inside being strangled quote unquote even though it's you know she's not yet in mortal danger it is still very scary 
Did you feel like, I felt like, I should say, they were playing that scene for comedy. Yeah. Yes. Where she was like, Nick, Nick, where are you? Nick, come on. And he's slamming his body against the door. Yes. And he's like, oh, he's giving looks like this door is pretty strong. I was like, what the fuck? I mean, again, this is is the the apex or, yeah, this is like the, the most... Dramatic scene of the film. By the way, I will say the one scene that was actually very well directed was the decoy kill scene, which where they follow that woman to her apartment where you don't know her, and then he pops out from behind the closet, and that just turns out to be the psychopath. I uh, jumped. Yeah, I jumped that was a good was one. Scared. But that scene, you want to feel like your main character might die, and you're like, uh-oh, silly Kevin Klein didn't yeah. think this through. <laughs> I- Come on. Fuck this I felt movie. like it was like a long, and it goes on for a long time. Yes. Yeah, it goes on for a long time, and I'm like, at any point, this guy could just pull out a knife and kill her. Oh yeah, like yeah. well, that's I not the way he it. does like, it. This- that's not the way he does the blue ribbon. And I guess so. And the but blue I was ribbon. Like, blue ribbon. Yeah. By so the way, I, uh, I thought Har- yeah. Harvey Keitel, like when the 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 guy the the guy who escapes the the from the uh, institution and is not yeah. the January the not calendar man. Uh, not January Man. I not thought January like man. somehow Kaitel And also not the Batman Rogue, the calendar. <laughs> yes, man. not sorry. I thought that somehow Kaitel and the mayor like had something to do with that and not yes. just some chance thing. Like so that they, they would have like they would I don't know, so that they could so that they could have the public win. Yes, so they that's could what be I like, thought it was. And he, and Maybe then, this is the most pure New York cop procedural ever because there are no connections. There's no dirty deeds. It's just inefficiency and bad police work and stumbling on a killer. It's like, who cares who it is? Ah, we don't know. Ah, you know, it's like this movie is all disconnected coincidences and then random epiphanies that lead to an unsatisfying solution. Yeah. Well, you know what? There's no no wonder Roger Ebert called this movie one of the worst films of all time. <laughs> and he did that four years after it came out in 1990. So he oh, revisited wow. his opinion four years later. But yep, still sticks. Um, obviously, we have opinions about this movie, but there are people out there with a different opinion. It is now time for Second Opinions. Yet this person recommends it Tell me what is the message Maybe that art is subjective I need a second opinion Thank you, John Lejoie. These are five-star reviews from Amazon.com. Buckle up, because 73% of these reviews of January Man are five-star reviews. People wow. are very huh. horny what? for Kevin Klein. This is from uh, oh, okay. Nate Kiley. Uh, really has done his job here on the research. Um, many of the reviews are from Japan. Uh, and they're in Japanese, so we don't huh. even know, but they are five-star reviews from Japan, so this movie is a big hit, uh, or I'm assuming because Nate has never said that a majority of reviews are in Japanese, so that's, be that with, that well, yeah, is. if we have anybody out there that can uh, speak and read Japanese, please go on there, figure out some of these reviews, and then read them to us. All right, um, here we go. This is from Alita Alice. Uh, she titles it, A Good Sunday Night Film. Kevin Klein, still kind of a tasty hunk. <laughs> Loved him. Miss him in more movies. He is so funny, sexy. The whole cast was good. Bring on the popcorn. I think Phoebe Cates is a lucky woman. Five stars. Uh, All right. Wow. Interesting. that You're going to his, his own wife. Um, Grandma Pat. Grandma Pat, Grandma Pat titled this one uh. "Liked Times Four, and uh, she says, "My husband and I saw it first and liked it. My son saw it next and liked it. He lent it to someone who liked it. I then went to finally see it and found out the disc had gotten scratched when the case closed improperly, <laughs> so I bought it again." So everyone who saw it liked it, and I wanted to see it, and I also liked it. <laughs> Grandma Pat. Five stars. <laughs> Grandma Pat. 
<laughs> Grandma Pat. Grandma Pat I wanted mean, to see what, what all the talk was about. What a story. Also, I mean, can what you kind imagine of DVD her is review has so many so much autobiographical <laughs> information inside of it. Like, I liked the movie. Like, but yeah. the part about the scratched DVD, that was that was wild I stuff. Really, it, that is how my mother-in-law tells a story. So <laughs> and <laughs> and I feels very... like that. Is, is her first name Pat? <laughs> um, all right, so this one is uh, John P. Holloway writes, Mark your calendar, dot, 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 good all year round. Sure, no car chases. No explosions, but an interesting plot with about a half dozen twists. I saw this first in Spain in 1989, in English somehow, and probably viewed it more than twice a year ever since. Scores of friends, and now my grown son and daughter have found themselves enamored of it. Rickman's turn is a far cry from his Die Hard and Quigley Down Under roles. Yes, because uh, Alan Rickman uh, from Die Hard and Quigley Down Under. uh, uh, One of the great disappointment movies of my childhood. Oh my gosh, 100%. It was was Magnum P.I. It was Tom Selleck when he he wasn't able to do Indiana Jones, even though they wanted him, so then he did Quigley Down Under, and it was... Ah, I want to see that. Oh, we should do that on this podcast. Yeah. Kevin Klein is brilliant. No wonder he finally got an Oscar for A Fish Called Wanda. Aiello is just great, and Steiger is, well, vintage Steiger. Harvey Keitel is a semi-controlled sibling uh, rivalry and trapped, and the tension is palpable. Susan Sarandon is a tortured fatal that holds it together. Master Antonio in a hundred years, will all be dead has been my mantra ever since. The tape's finally worn out, and I'm gladly going to pay for the DVD. Would someone get me a cup of coffee, please? Preferably <laughs> an espresso. Five stars. That was written in 2004. Boy, people love <laughs> this movie. So so wait, so this movie is before Fish Called Wanda? After. After. After, but I, I guess this person saw it, and who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's okay, really okay, he's okay, watching okay. VHS tapes in two thousand and four. Okay, okay, uh, the movie came okay, out. In, wow. Yeah, came out in eighty nine. The uh, opening weekend. They don't have a budget for it, but uh, it's described as lavishly budgeted. It's not a cheap movie. This is not a cheap no. movie. Oh no, it's big. It's a yeah. big. It's like a. It's a proper big. You know, New York uh, movie. It must have been a very expensive. But, but movie. good uh, point of what I mean. Who, who said that there's no chases, there's no car no chases. There's, yeah. no, <laughs> well. there's no action. There's really no action except for that final sequence, um, which was which was like almost like a walkthrough for the atomic blonde stair fight scene. It was like, yeah, and then I'll hit you like this, and then we'll yeah, do the that. Yeah, the whole final <laughs> scene is basically... <laughs> Uh, the whole final scene is basically just falling down one flight of yeah. stairs, falling down yes. one very wide bil- one yeah. building's worth of stairs. Um, the uh, it's the opposite of the raid. <laughs> <laughs> the opening weekend was uh, a, a record one point seven million, and the worldwide gross was four million. This movie came in one hundred and twenty second place out of all movies made in nineteen eighty nine. The Yikes. top three movies were Batman, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Lethal Weapon two, and it was beaten by these shows that were prominently featured here on the podcast. Look Who's Talking, Roadhouse, Tango and Cash, No Holds Barred, My Stepmom's an Alien, and it beat nothing that we have done. Uh, by the way, I want to read you the taglines. Oh. What a way to start the year. Well, okay. Oh, God. <laughs> Murder, corruption, comedy. So it was billed as oh, a comedy. Oh, wow. And ah, then finally. That's <laughs> shocking. And then this is my favorite one. 11 women, 11 months. Only one man can stop him. <laughs> All right. Like, what? I guess I, I, it's not really what we're following. It's not like he's on the trail. He's on the trail of a serial killer for about a week and a half. Mm. Uh, maybe. It's, this, is mm. a, this, this is maybe, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to say something that is probably not true, but this is maybe the worst movie that has so many good components in it, well, like three right? Academy like, Award winners, uh, an incredible writer, yeah. like like all of the pieces are so good individually um, that it and then it adds up to something so unsuccessful 
is kind of wild. I just you know? don't even understand why people signed on to. I mean, that's the whole thing. I don't know. It's it, like, would you guys recommend watching it? And I'm gonna go first and say I would because there's so many funny, weird yeah. things. It's like it. There are like I was enjoying my. It goes by quick. It just doesn't make any sense. There are some funny scenes. The 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 Steiger Keitel ILO <laughs> scene. You got to see that. I think you have to see the Sarandon and Klein scene with the three slaps. Yeah. You got to see that. <laughs> um, you got that whole dinner. The Sarandon yeah, Klein that dinner. One, that one right there. So good. The whole yeah. I I I I I agree. I think I think you have to watch it om- almost because it's. It's so it's kind of just so shocking. You know, you 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 your mind t- is telling you I believe these I know these are good actors. So why is this not work? What is wrong? It's like a the movie creates a dissonance that is bizarre. Like it is it is strange to watch cuz you're like I know all that all the ingredients here are delicious, but why it's, does this soup taste rancid? It's like it's the way I can describe it is it's the way I felt when I realized I needed glasses. I could see, <laughs> but it wasn't clear to me. I was like looking at the yeah. chalkboard. And I was like, why is the teacher writing so lightly? And someone's like, the teacher's not writing lightly. You just can't see her, the writing. I was like, right. Cause it's like, it is there. I can see the world. It's just not in focus. And that's this movie is, I mean, and arguably like, the tonality is really the issue. If they made one choice, yes. it's a better it's, it's a better movie. It's just a better movie one if, way. If they would just drill down on something, yeah. it would be good. If you were like, it's a if 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 it's a comedic Sherlock Holmes inside the New York police department railing against Danny Aiello, great. If you take out Kevin Klein and replace him with like, I don't know. Joe Montana, yeah, or Robert De Niro, or Andy Garcia, or somebody, an, another like a guy who's going to be like, nope, I'm just going to be the New York detective guy. Yeah. I'm on the case. Then you're like, oh, it's more like a Joe Estrahouse kind of proper procedural thriller. I would be like, okay, I kind of get what that movie is. But this movie is like a fucking mess of all of these. It's things. almost like everybody's actor's secret was that they were in different movies and they weren't allowed yeah. to tell each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool up. I want to just talk about your podcast, oh, which yeah. I think is so great. You and Thank Suchin you. Pak uh, host this amazing podcast, which I think that just tell people what the premise is, because it's a, I think it's a great premise. It, it's basically we talk about the things that we buy and buy into. So, yes, mm-hmm. there's a, a lot of shopping. Uh, I'm trying to fill a void. That is why sure. uh, a chasm to too hard to leap over. (laughs) Um, But uh, in the end, we really end up talking about what, you know, why, why, what's going on with us and try to like find meaning. (laughs) Well, but I think what I love about the show as somebody who has been and and Jason, I'm sure can speak this as well. Like we've all been in our houses and what you buy, like what, there are these interesting things that define you. Like Jason was talking about something the other night that I was like, like you were talking about, you get this, you got at a certain point, this root beer of the month club. And I was like, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's like, but what are Wait, these things what? that bring? <laughs> oh yeah. No, earlier I, I, I had to stop doing it. Cause I was like, I don't normally drink soda like yeah. this. This is crazy. <laughs> 30 you know, I'm not a, a month. soda drinker, but I, I, I read something and then I signed up for a thing that said, they, it sent me like a box of 30, um, uh, like regional root beers, like like not like A and W or whatever, yeah. like like re, like small batch root beers, and they were delicious. But I was also like, this is like a cry for help. <laughs> this is like if anybody saw, if anybody opened my fridge and saw thirty root beers in there, they would be well within their <laughs> rights to be like, I this is this is grounds to be institutionalized. <laughs> I'm 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 surprised that you didn't just like take two out at a time and just put them in there, but because uh, <laughs> I hide hide. Them. I have like a, a fridge where I hide my uh, my canned secret wine. Secret fridge? I oh, I have, a, I, have a, I have a garage fridge, which has been the best thing. Uh, secret fridge. <laughs> oh wow! Um, secret but I do, fridge. <laughs> but I do love. But you're this, right. Like, you're right. Cool up in the sense that like our purchases this during this period yeah. during this year probably more than ever our purchases are super revealing about who we are and the things that we are trying to either thirsts we're trying to satiate both literally and figuratively and everything else, you know? It's it's a great podcast. 
Thanks. You will love it. And your documentary origin story is now out on uh, Blu-ray, right? Yes. It's, uh, so that is also out for people to consume. When we've talked about this before on the show, it's a great documentary about you, you and where you're from. <laughs> and and it's a fascinating story. And if you haven't checked that out as well, you got to check that out. Uh, really, really. And good. you solve a murder. That's you do right. solve a murder. You solve That's a murder right. inside of it. So, and your documentary um, is at origin story dot mm-hmm. or colon. January man. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Check that out. You can and, get that on Amazon, and, bros. <laughs> and this coming fall, you are the showrunner for Clarissa Explains <laughs> It All, right? You guys, I, I, I am not allowed so to announce it yet. Stuff. So much good stuff for you. Cool up. So excited. <laughs> it's been uh, a great <laughs> demi for me, you guys. <laughs> uh, Jason, what do you want to talk about? Anything to plug? Anything to do? Um, Close Enough Season 2 is out on HBO so Max funny. right now. Uh, a great animated show that I'm one of the voices on. And I'm not sure, depending on when this comes out, uh, the Invincible animated show based on Ooh, the Robert yeah. Kirkman Ooh. animated series Excellent. is going to be out on Amazon soon. And it is fantastic. Amazon uh, killing the superhero game. Boys yes. and Invincible. Like, wow. Yes. Great job. Yeah. Uh, no, big time. Big so time. good. I will just uh, plug that I'm in a movie uh, right now that you can get on VOD called Happily uh, with a killer cast of people like Joel McHale, uh, Carrie Bechet, uh, Kirby Howell Baptiste, uh, Shannon Woodward, uh, Brecken Meyer, Charlene Yee, John Daly, uh, Stephen Root, so many great people. Uh, and that is on VOD right now. And uh, if you want to check out some fun stuff that we're doing online on Twitch, uh, you can check out uh, twitch.tv slash friendzone. And there's a bunch of different shows every week up there. Uh, Twitch.tv slash friendzone. It's just like YouTube. You can just get on. Uh, a big thank you to Cody, our super producer, our amazing sound engineer, Devin. Of course, Avril Halley, our producer who picks all of our films. And Nate Kylie does all of our research. A shout out to July Diaz, who makes sure this show sounds as good as possible. And a tip of the hat to the ghost of Craig Team Nelson. That's Zach McAleese and also Kyle Waldron, who do all of our great art. You can follow us on all the social media. And if you want to talk about January Man, you can give us a call at 619-P-A-U-L-A-S-K. That's 619-Paul-Ask. I'll talk about your life. I'll talk about this movie. We'll talk about it all. And make sure you visit tpublic.com slash store slash H-E-T-E-M to get the sex figurine from the Jade shirt. It is released. It is out. What I drew. What do you mean a figurine? Well, I mean, or the figurine that I drew of people having sex. My stick figure of sex. Wait, have we made an actual like figure? <laughs> no, no, like no. I, 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 I'm calling. I'm calling the stick figure. Sorry, the stick figure oh, drawing. I get it now. Is, got it, got yes, it, got the got stick it, figure yeah, drawing yeah. is now available. So check yeah, all that yeah, out. No, uh, that is all we have. I literally was like, are we currently making like a desktop figurine of that stick figure fuck doll? Cool. Like, up. I, I have mean, to show I'm you gonna this. Buy I'm gonna it. send you the clip of what exactly okay, happened. Please. We I we saw a sex pillow in in in. We saw sex. Hello in uh, in this movie Jade, and I was trying to describe the way I thought it was used in sex. Uh, Paul, okay. Paul drew a picture. I, I see it right now. I'm seeing it yeah, right yeah. now. Oh, okay. Molly just sent it, and wow, yeah. Paul, <laughs> really, well, really but, good and, art. By the way, I, I, by the way, yes, it was it was on the it was on the it was a very quick draw. But I will tell you that many of, careful cool up. You, this picture makes people horny. I will careful. tell you this that many of the people I spoke to uh, after that episode came out in the sex. Uh, pillow world uh were telling me that i was right on the money i'm sorry i'm gonna stop you right there many of the people that you talked to in the sex pillow pillow world world, well i've got a lot of a lot of people said online how many people are there and why are you and you're talking well they they were talking to me they were talking to me and they were saying hey i just want to say that you're right uh, the Liberator will send you these. And I was like, no, no I don't need to have anything sent to me. I, so I wait, just, yeah. are you now like the My Pillow guy for sex pillows? What's <laughs> happening? If the price is right, I'm going to get into that game because <laughs> why not? I mean, what are people doing right now in the pandemic more than anything? I mean, Having listen, sex. we have, listen, on Tee Public, we put out <laughs> T-shirts. We put out all sorts of merch. Why not add fuck pillows? I, I mean... mean I've, I've, Branded fuck pillows. Like, I'm in. I, Paul, use cool what off. is now obviously into that? Have you gotten into very that? Deep add deep connections. Have you guys talked about the Liberator? Uh, you know what? I will now. I mean, <laughs> once you guys do a how did this get made? Fuck pillow. Uh, I'm yeah. definitely right. going to talk thank, about we it. We will add it to cart. All right. Well, thank you everybody for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. How did this get made?